Hey guys, welcome back to Sinfully Scented. I'm Rebecca and in today's video I wanted to do a little bit of a soap making experiment. Uh, so I tested out various milks uh, versus water in soap to see if milks really helped with the performance of the soaps. Uh, this is going to be part one of a video. Part two will come out probably after the soap sits for about four to six weeks to cure so that I can really see the difference between the water and the milks to see if they make that much of a difference in the final product. So to do this experiment, I needed to establish a control. So my control was definitely water to see how that performed. But I also uh, compared it with goat's milk, heavy cream, buttermilk, and then I wanted to test out some vegan milks as well. So I tested it against homemade coconut milk and homemade oat milk, which if you want to try making those yourself, there are plenty of videos that already encompass how to make your own homemade vegan milks, uh, and you can just use those in soap making like you would a normal milk. Now, to keep this relatively simple, I didn't want to do a full milk soap because then I would have had to make six different batches of soap, so what I did was the kind of standard process in making a milk soap, which is where you make your soap with a highly concentrated lye solution. So you use one part lye to one part water, and then you compensate the rest of the liquid in a soap form. That way you don't have to go through the process of freezing the milk and adding the lye slowly to it. You just add the milk in at the end after the lye has already started to work on the oils to prevent the milk from scorching. So anyways, I am going to go ahead and let you watch the video and see the results for yourself and I will check back in with you guys later. So these are the five milks that I'm going to be testing out versus water to see if it makes that much of a difference using milk in soap. In my pot today, I have 65% olive oil, 20% coconut oil, and 15% shea butter with an 8% super fat. I've allowed my oils and my lye solution to cool to room temperature, and my lye solution is a one-to-one -one lye to water solution so that I have enough room to add in the milks at the end. Once my soap was mixed up, I teared out a scale and weighed out my soap batter so I could see exactly how much I needed to add to each cup so that I got the same amount of soap in each bottle. Uh, so you can see it came out to about 94.5, but I probably should have done 90 instead of 95 uh, because I was a little bit short at the end. So starting with my water, each of these cups has 20 grams of liquid in it by weight and I am adding in 95 grams of my soap batter and mixing it thoroughly and then pouring it into a single cavity mold so I have one bar of soap of each um, different type of liquid or milk so that I can compare them at the end. I'm now going to repeat this process with the goat milk and the remaining milks, pouring them all into the mold and I will let them set up for about 24 to 48 hours and I will be back in to check with you guys when those are done.
Okay guys, so it's been about 48 hours since I made the milk soaps and I'm going to do a quick lather test on all of them to see if one of them outperforms the rest as far as lather goes. I'm going to start off with our control which was just made with straight up water. Okay, so here's the lather on the water soap. It's really small bubbles. Uh, it is a high olive oil soap, so that's to be expected. Uh, also, the soap hasn't cured yet, so this is just a preliminary test to see if one of the soaps lather better than the others. It is very silky feeling. I do like the feeling of the lather. But it's not very big fluffy bubbles, it's very small and dense. And it does have a little bit of that gummy feel that you get from a high olive oil soap, but it's not that bad. So next we have the goat milk soap, which is beautifully white. I really love this bar, it came out really nice and we're gonna see how it lathers. Alright, and with this one you can see that the lather is a lot better than the first one. Uh, the bubbles are larger. The lather feels very silky, very smooth, but you can definitely see that it's not quite as lotion-like. You definitely get way more of a lather, and that's probably from the sugars in the milk. Uh, sugar tends to give soap a little bit of a better lather, but I definitely like this one. And my hands are feeling really soft right now. They're not feeling overly dry, even after being washed twice. Next we have the soap made with heavy cream. Now look at that. So the heavy cream definitely gave it a really big boost in lather, which I'm surprised about. I was concerned, uh, this is an 8% super fat, so I was concerned that the heavy cream would produce too much fat because it is the highest fat content of all the soaps. Uh, so I kind of thought that the heavy cream would reduce the lather because it would increase the excess fat content so much. But look at that lather from the heavy cream soap. That's beautiful. Next we have the buttermilk soap. And this one isn't quite as bubbly as the heavy cream soap, but it, it does produce more of a lather than the water or the goat milk soap. And it does feel really silky on my hands. I really like the feel of this soap. And this one, uh, was the one that had the most color change. It kind of turned to like an amber color, which was really pretty. Uh, and this one feels really nice. I like the feel of this one. The milks definitely help the soap straight out of the bat to lather so much better. And now we're moving on to our vegan soaps. I have the coconut milk soap. So I actually made the coconut milk myself. Um, so let's see how this tests out. And there we have the coconut milk soap, which definitely gives like a nice bubbly lather. This one feels not quite as silky as some of the other milk soaps, but this is a uh, vegan friendly option as far as milks go. And as you can see, it definitely improved the lather from the straight water. And lastly, we have the oat milk soap. Again, I made the oat milk myself. Uh, this one had some trouble unmolding, that's why it doesn't look that pretty. It's supposed to be a butterfly, um, but we're going to see if the oat milk does anything for the lather. And this one seemed to produce a really nice lather, although it's difficult to work with as a soap. I think that if you wanted to make an oat milk soap, it would definitely uh, be a good addition if you're willing to wait some extra time for it to set up. 
I kind of expected it to be more of a gummy lather, but it is not. It's very nice and foamy. Feels really good on the hands. Uh, again, this is the sixth time that I've washed my hands in a row and they don't feel dry at all. They feel really nice. So I do like this soap recipe for sure. And the addition of the milks really helps to boost that lather. So there's the oat milk. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this milk soap experiment. I was really surprised by the results. I honestly expected the goat milk uh, to perform the best because that's the most popular milk for making soap is goat milk soaps. I was really surprised to see that the heavy cream and the buttermilk actually performed better. And then also the vegan milks made a huge difference over the water as well. Just as a reminder, this is only a preliminary video. Again, the soaps haven't cured, they haven't really done their thing yet. So I'm gonna be making another video in about four to six weeks to update you guys on the lather of the soap after it has fully cured. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel, especially if you want to be updated on the milk soaps as they cure and how that really impacted the lather versus just water to see if that extra cost and that extra effort is really worth the uh, result that you get at the end. Anyways, I will see you guys again. I have another video coming out this week. Uh, this will be a two video week, so stay tuned for that.